we continue Life Beyond the Grave on today's 700 Club. That's when God sent me back. Championship roper Freddie Vest loves the thrill of the chase and the challenge of competing against his fellow cowboys. On July 28, 2008, Freddie was headed to a calf roping in Graham, Texas. His daughter Lee remembers seeing her father off at the door. We just hugged for a long time, and um, I remember turning back to tell him I love him, and it kind of brought tears to my eyes. By 1 o'clock that afternoon, Freddie had made three successful calf roping runs. He was waiting to make his fourth when he suddenly dropped dead in the saddle. His friend, Dennis McKinley, recalls that day. I was just sitting on the fence, and all of a sudden, I saw this movement, all this, this movement out of my left eye, and then just almost simultaneously, this uh, smack. And I looked, and he was on the ground. I jumped off the fence, and I was the first one to him. And uh, I put my hand under his head and lifted it up, and I started praying for him. Veteran firefighter Eddie Smith was next to respond. While Eddie began CPR, Dennis called upon everyone present to pray. While I, I was doing the CPR, I was praying, but I could hear people praying all around me. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, I'm going to tell you, there was a lot of men, a lot of women that were praying. Eddie and fellow firefighter Don Lavender continued doing CPR on Freddie for 45 minutes until the ambulance arrived. They got him on a stretcher and they put him in the ambulance. And we're looking through the windows and they shocked him and Eddie says to me it doesn't look good he was straight lining it that means you're dead we just put him in God's hands ambulance paramedics continued CPR and defibrillated Freddie's heart twice while en route to Graham Hospital doctors there were able to get an irregular heartbeat and Freddie was immediately airlifted to Harris Methodist Hospital in Fort Worth his heart had to be restarted twice more during the flight. Freddie's wife and son were in Mississippi visiting family when they first heard the news. A friend called and said there was an accident at the roping. She didn't know all the details, but it, it's not good. For, you know, told me that Freddie fell off his horse and that I, you know, needed to get to the hospital. They were going to be care flightening. So I was just trying to get there as fast as I could. You know, you feel helpless. I, I felt like there's, you know, there's nothing I can do. It was just taking forever. Freddie's loved ones held vigil as he was rushed into surgery. Doctors told the family that they were able to repair his heart, but weren't sure what to expect long term. Dr. Denzel D'Souza spoke with them about Freddie's chances for survival. All cardiac arrest, and there's about 250, 300,000 a year in the United States. Of those, only about 9% will survive. And every minute that passes without defibrillation or restoration of blood flow, your mortality goes up 10%. The brain, you've got maybe five, six, seven, if you're lucky, 10 minutes to get things going again. I actually was concerned that he was going to have brain damage. All they could do was wait. I would go wherever I could to get along, and that's why I would pray. While his relatives and friends were praying at the hospital, Freddie says he was somewhere else. There's a Bible verse that uh, says absent from the body is present with the Lord. And when I fell off that horse, I was dead before I hit the ground. I was with the Lord and he didn't allow me to see what heaven was like, but he let me experience what it felt like to be in heaven. He showed me the love that's there, and there's more love than you can imagine. I mean, the feeling of how much love it is is incredible, and the peace that you have, it's a perfect peace. The only thing I can relate it to is when I was young, I'd crawl up my mother's lap, and she would cradle me and hold me and rock me. And that was the most peaceful, safe, loving place and that feeling, you could multiply it times a thousand and you still wouldn't be close to what it really feels like when you're there with the Lord. Uh, I tell some of my buddies there's, there's no uh, I gotta do's in heaven. 
you know, there was not a feeling of time. There was no time uh, to worry about, like, I need to go do this, I should be doing this. There was nothing like that. And Freddie also remembers having conversations with God. You know, but when I was there, there was communication, but it wasn't communication like words. The communication was inside of me, and it was nothing that verbally or you would have ears to hear or a mouth to speak it. It was when God tells you something, you, can, you know it's Him. He allowed me to see the prayers that came up for me. And it started with one bolt of light, and then there was two bolts of light, and three, and then there was 10, and there was like hundreds, then there was thousands of bolts of light. Each one of those bolts of light was a prayer that someone had sent up for me. And when there got to be so many bolts of light, it exploded into the brightest light. And I don't know how to explain it. It was just a very, very bright light. And that's when God sent me back. And when I came back from that, I was in the hospital bed and they had my arms tied down. I was on life support. They had a tube down my throat, had an IV in my hand and one in my neck. And when I came to, I tried to struggle and get up. And the nurse there said, Mr. Vest, you're okay. And I just looked there and I said, mm -hmm. they said, no, okay, you don't know where I've been. This, this doesn't compare to okay. Freddie made a full recovery but he still questioned what he'd experienced. For a while, I thought, well, I've got to do something. I've got to make something happen for the Lord. He sent me back for a purpose. I need to go make something happen. That wasn't it. For several months, I did that and prayed every morning, why? And so he took me to Jeremiah and uh, showed me a verse there. And the verse simply says, you will go to whom I send you to, and you will say what I have you to say and I'm a simple person, but I understood that. And that's my purpose. I don't try to make things happen now. I wait for the day and when he takes me to someone and I say what he has me to say, and that makes it pretty simple. Today, Freddie and his family savor their time together, though Freddie says he still anticipates returning to the place he calls home. Heaven is real. It's a real place. He's a real person. And I look forward to the day that I will get to be there, but I'm not pushing it at this point. At first, when I came back, I, I was ready to go the next day, you know, but I love my family, I love my kids, I love my wife, and I'll stay as long as he allows me to stay. But when I do go, they don't have to worry about me. Dying is easy, living is hard. There's someone out there that needs to know that heaven is a real place, God is a real person, and when you take that last breath, if you're a Christian, you're going to meet Him. What a glorious testimony. Heaven is real. God is real. Jesus is real. These aren't illusions. Heaven is a real place. And it's there. It's big. It's plenty of room. Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I'm going to prepare a place for you, then I'll come again and take you unto myself. If you know the Lord, heaven is glorious. It's beyond anything we could see. And the Apostle Paul said, I hasn't seen it. Ear hasn't heard it. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love Him. But He's revealed it to us by His Spirit. You have not even conceived of what God has for you. But the question I ask you right now is, have you received Jesus? If you were to die, if you, your heart stopped and you fell off that horse or fell in front of a car or dropped dead on the sidewalk or fell off a ladder or whatever, where will you go? Where will you spend eternity? And Jesus says to you, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Do you want to be in paradise? Do you want to be there? Do you? Do you want to? 
Well, ask him. Your life right now will depend on it. I want you to bow your head right now, wherever you happen to be, and I want you to pray these words with me. If you don't know, get right today. These words, Jesus, that's right, Jesus. I'm a sinner, Lord. I don't deserve heaven. I haven't earned anything but hell. But Jesus, I pray right now, and I ask you, come into my heart. Live in me. And from this moment on, I will live for you, and I will serve you. From this moment on, Lord, I'm yours. Thank you. Now, I want to pray for you wherever you are. Father, in Jesus' name, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come into people's lives. Fill them now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed with me just then, God has done something wonderful. The angels are rejoicing over one sinner that comes to the Lord. And we thank God for thousands who are coming to Jesus. Now, I have a little packet that I've told you about before. It's called A New Day. And in it is a compact disc, a CD, that has a description of things that you have done and what it means and what's coming next. And there's a little book that here, the book that has over 60 scriptures in it, taken from the teaching. And we'll give this to you free. So if you prayed with me, I want you to get started. Now, this will help you. This is for you to get started. Please call. It's a toll-free number, 1-800-759-0700. And say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. I'm going to be in heaven. Oh, what reunions we're going to have. Call right now, 1-800-759-0700. Say, I prayed. I have given my heart to the Lord.